daily light. <laughs> or, in my household, it's daily bright. Boy, one of the things about having a porch that's with the morning sun is that it gets extremely bright. I mean, even with the shade on, it's kind of amusing because with out setting up a lot of blocks or redirects of the light, you wind up having your contrast and your lightness and your brightness and everything when you're recording going all different directions. <laughs> so sometimes I'm in the shade, sometimes I'm not. But God has always provided for us in every circumstance or situation that we find ourselves in, whether we be in the shade or whether our contrast be off or our lightness or our brightness or our sinfulness or our righteousness. God always is at work in us, both to do and to will of his good pleasure, causing each day for us to realize that it is his salvation that's being worked out in us and that we participate with him by reading our Bible, by praying, by fellowshipping, by witnessing, by sharing, by caring, by doing the things that Jesus said. Because in reality, there's a certain amount of religion to it that you could say, well, those are just religious themes, they're religious ideas and doctrines. Yeah, that's true. But you see, the difference between a religion and a relationship is when a person does something because they love to, because they enjoy the person they're doing it with, then it becomes a relationship. And that's what being with Jesus is like, is that if you're doing it because of religion, then you'll receive a religious reward. But if you're doing it because of relationship, <laughs> then the one you're having a relationship with, he will reward you. So in daily life, the fruit of the Spirit is goodness. Be ye followers of God as dear children. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. The fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. After that the kindness and love of our God, our Savior, toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You know, it's easy to ignore the fact that Jesus put up with, dealt with, and was able to comfort and console those who persecuted him. It's easy to ignore the fact that Jesus came, died, and rose again, and said that we should live like him. You know, it's easy to ignore the fact that Jesus said, these words that I tell you now are the things that I want you to do. Those are all easy things to ignore because we can put them off. But you know, if you have a personal relationship with God, and He's speaking to you, and you're hearing Him, it's kind of hard to put off God when He reinforces what Jesus said. I think we ought to do like He said. I think we ought to bless those who miserably and despitefully persecute us. Because in a world that's headed for hell in a handbasket, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that it's going to get worse. As a matter of fact, it already has. So when it does, we don't go out raising a righteous flag and waving it and telling everyone they're going to hell, but we care about the person who we might see eternally damned because we don't want them to go there. And we don't beat them to death by trying to save them because 
although the lifesaver idea of knocking them out so that you could swim backwards with them is a nice idea, you're not the one saving them. You got to get that out of your mind because that's a religious idea. God is the one who causes salvation and response in a person's heart to hear, to see, and to know what it is he wants them to understand so that they would realize that it is the end of days. It is the time of his judgment that's coming. So don't get too carried away with this idea of being a lifesaver and you're going to knock the person out, you know, and drag him to shore. Because really it's the Holy Spirit who causes one to sow, another to reap, another to water, and another to plow the ground. And don't get too carried away about plowing the ground because God's the one who's doing the plowing on the inside. You're just meant to share on the outside the love of God. Eben Ezer, Ebenezer, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. I was brought low, and he helped me. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and my song will I praise him. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. <laughs> it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Say that again. <laughs> Can we go one more? It's better to trust in the Lord than to trust in anything else. <laughs> Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. <laughs> Where else are you going to have hope? He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. There failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. When I sent you without a purse, and I sent you without money, and shoes, did you lack anything? And they said, No, nothing. Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. You know, the one thing I like to say about a Christian, or to a Christian, what do you got to worry about? <laughs> I mean, really, what do you really have to worry about? If you're talking to God, if you're reading His Word, if you're praying, if you're getting answers and He's speaking to you, I think you're on your way. It says, Delight yourself in the Lord thy God, commit thy way unto Him, rejoice in the Lord always, trust in Him. I mean, there's so simple a way for you to walk each day that all you need to do is take the time to, as they say, pray, but really to have conversation with God and to let Him lead you in the way. Because it's not that hard, and it's really not that complicated. He said he would take care of us. So if it comes that there be a storm, you don't look at the horizon and are terrified, but rather you go, cool, Lord, what are you going to do about this one? So in whatever circumstances you are today, I challenge you or I ask you, I don't challenge you because, you know, you might challenge me back. <laughs> and I'm having enough challenge reading all these. But I ask you, why not ask God what he's going to do rather than just run right out and do what you think you ought to do. That might be a better way to go.